Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I'm going to be making these cool pendulum paintings. In this video I'll show you how I made the frame for making the paintings, how I set up to do the paintings, and then I'll show you a bunch of different paintings that I made with this. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So how did I build the frame? Well, to start out with, I had to cut out four three foot, four two foot, six 28 inch, two 14 and a half inch, two 11 and a half inch, and eight three inch pieces of half inch CPVC piping. I also needed 10 half inch T's and eight half inch 90's. And the T's are two inches long and the 90's are half inch long. That's just important because the total frame size ends up being 34 inches by 34 inches. So after that, I started with the bottom and keep in mind these T's face straight up to meet with the top, as do these four on the top, and these two on the top are facing inwards towards each other. So then you just, you set up the bottom with this assembly, you set up the top with this assembly, you make the two squares and then you also have your four two inch pieces that, uh, so basically what you do is these two come together above the plane and these two are below the plane and the two that are below the plane go into these two T's here and they're all taped together. I'll show you in a minute. It's just, I figured if anyone wanted to remake the frame, the frame themselves, they'd like to have kind of a rough measurement of parts required and stuff like that. And the four three inch pieces, they're not shown, but basically they are to connect the top to the bottom and you just connect. This is pointed up and it just meets up with this, which is pointed down. So you can see here, this is what it looks like when it's just sitting on the floor. And then to put it together, you just take the three foot pieces and you connect them into the T's on the bottom and the T's on the top. And then, yeah, hopefully this might show it a little better. So you've got here, this pipe is on top. It goes to here where you've got these ones underneath that go into the T's. And if I had a T here, this pipe would come out down here and it would run into that one, which we don't want. So then why do I have this like this? Well, part of the reason is I bought pipe in five foot sections. So after I cut the tops off the three foot ones, I just had two foot ones lying around, but it works good because you tape the ends of these together and you've got a gap and the string goes straight down through that. It's tied off on this bar and then you get your pendulum point on the underside coming up like this. And then it just pendulums around that. Here's what the frame looks like fully put together. So you can see what I mean by that. You can see, this is what I meant by, these are this plane, and then those ones have to be up above so they don't collide with the other ones. You could flex them both and that would work. But I've run the uh, string straight down the bottom here. And then you can see it comes out the underside and that's where the pendulum comes in. I haven't used any glue to keep any of this together. It just naturally wants to stick together all on its own. It's pretty solid. It works. If I had to, I could duct tape things together, but I don't think I need to. The first step is to get your paint holder onto the pendulum. For my setup, I have these plastic bottles that are like ketchup and mustard, bo mustard bottles you get at restaurants. And all I'm doing is I'm duct taping each of the four strings at roughly equal distance points around the bottle. For this step, make sure to keep the strings tight as you're taping them to the bottle, otherwise your bottle will be kind of sideways. It's not super critical that you have your bottle perfectly up and down though, because the paint doesn't really care if it's tilted one or two degrees in any direction. Once all the strings are taped around the bottle, I left enough on the ends so that I could loop them back up and then tie a couple of knots at the top. This helps because once the paint's in the bottle, there's weight on it, so it's pulling downwards. And if you just have the strings there, they can pull up and out of the duct tape a little bit, which will mess up the pendulum. Once you put the loop in it, then it can't slide down on the string at all. Once the loops are tied, the next step is to poke a bunch of air holes in the bottom of the bottle. 
This is because if you don't poke these holes, you'll get kind of an airlock, so the paint won't come out nicely, because this bottle is designed to be squeezed to get a condiment out of it. After you poke the holes, the next step is to just put some duct tape over the top to prevent the paint leaking out while you fill the bottle, and then pull this off when you're ready to do the pendulum painting. The purpose of the string X you see here is to lessen the amount of string the pendulum has to pendulum around. This means it'll make smaller circles, which is better for smaller canvases. After the tape has been applied to the underside of the bottle, the next step is to pick it up and fill it with paint. Uh, you can see I have a little plate thing that I've made that it just sits in and it's taped to the frame and that holds it in place while I fill it with paint. The purpose of the plate underneath is just in case any paint leaks out from the holes in the bottom of the bottle. It catches them so they don't go on any canvas or anything below. And then the duct tape is strong enough to hold the bottle upright in place on the frame while I'm filling it with paint. The last step before putting paint into the bottle is to take the top off and modify it. The hole that comes with the cap is too small for the to get the right amount of paint coming out, so I have to just chop it off so I get a little bit bigger of a hole, and then I'm good to go. To chop it off, I'm just using a hacksaw blade, and I really quickly just went through the plastic. I made sure that uh, where I went through, the top cap could still be put around the nozzle to hold the paint back, and then you can see once I've cut it off, there's a much bigger hole, so it'll get a lot better paint flow through it. It's finally time to put the paint in. So. For the amount of paint that I used per painting, that depends on your canvas size. I found that filling this bottle about halfway up was good enough for most sizes, but it'll, it'll really depend on what size of painting you're trying to make. Once you've got roughly the amount of paint you want to use in the bottle, I found that sometimes I needed to dilute the paint a little bit and sometimes I didn't. So if you need to dilute it, just add a little bit of water and then mix it really, really good to make sure your paint is thin enough to come out of the nozzle nicely. There's not really a test for this. It's just you'll do a couple paintings and you'll get kind of an idea of the consistency of the paint that you want. Once it's all mixed up, it's time to screw the cap back on and get to painting. The first step when you're ready to start painting is to remove the duct tape sealing off the air holes. I forgot to do this a couple times and it basically just means your paint will drip out really slowly and you don't get a nice flow. And then once you're ready to paint, you just kind of throw it in a direction, not super hard. You just, you get a feel for it, you just kind of push and let it go and then it'll start doing this cool spiral. When you're ready to stop the painting, it's important to have a plate or some other way of catching it ready to go, and you just stick that under the flow to stop it, and then you pull your paint bottle back and then cap it off. I usually put the top back on it, and then I put a piece of duct tape over the top, and then I hang it around the side of the frame so it will not get any more paint on my canvas. Here's another painting I did. For this one, the cool thing that I did was I spiraled it one way, and then I stopped it and I spiraled it back the other way. And that way you get kind of a cool double spiral and you get a different middle portion to it. This idea was super cool. It's to take four different canvases and then you put them all together and paint on top of them. But when you go to put them on the wall, they're four different canvases. So you leave a bit of a gap between them. 
but the lines will all line up between the canvases so it should look super cool. Here's the end result of three days worth of painting with pendulums. These turned out really awesome. I made a ton more than what's shown here, but these are the best. Uh, I'll be putting out another video in a couple weeks to show how I made the trees and stuff on these. But for now, this was a lot of fun, especially if you're like me and you're a little bit challenged with a paintbrush. Painting with a pendulum is a lot easier and it makes cool paintings too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.